Good evening. Tonight, we look back at the 70s, a decade starkly different from the 60s. In the 60s, blacks made first strides into all facets of American society. And as America moved into the 70s, the impact of the victories was first felt and the scope of civil rights battles broadened. During the 60s, blacks fought for recognition and acceptance. In the 70s, the goal was total equality. With that difference in mind, let's look back at the drama, the excitement, the firsts, and the disappointments of American blacks in the 70s. In politics, the 70s began with a bang. A frail black woman from Brooklyn, New York, who'd already made history as the nation's first black congresswoman, decided she wanted more. I stand before you today as a candidate for the Democratic nomination for the presidency of the United States of America. U.S. Representative Shirley Chisholm was not nominated by the 1972 Democratic Convention, but the nation knew Congresswoman Chisholm was a political force to be reckoned with. In the South, the Reverend Andrew Young, a Georgia preacher in Atlanta, had plans to go down in history as a political first. Young, who helped mold the civil rights movement of the 60s, was elected in 1972 to the Georgia 5th Congressional District of Atlanta. He thus became the first black elected to Congress from the South since Reconstruction, and one of the few to be elected from a majority white district. I've got friends voting for Andrew Young, and when they ask me, why am I voting for Fletcher Thompson, and I want to know why they're voting for Andrew Young, this is very important to me, and it, it frightens me. There are things that we are not aware of. Another political aspirant campaigned in the streets for Young during those days, Maynard Holbrook Jackson, Jr., then Atlanta's vice mayor, in January of 1974, became the first black mayor of a major city from the South, since the 1800s. On the national front, the 1976 Democratic Convention was a scene of new beginnings, speculations, and great expectations. The memories of Watergate fresh in the minds of the American people. The mood of the convention was that of a nation eager for change. And the individual chosen to deliver the keynote address was a highly respected, forthright congresswoman from Texas, Barbara Jordan. We call ourselves public servants, but I'll tell you this, we as public servants must set an example for the rest of the nation. It is hypocritical for the public official to admonish and exhort the people to uphold the common good if we are derelict in upholding the common good. Congresswoman Jordan was the first black to keynote the 144-year-old Democratic Convention. In 1976, blacks turned out in unprecedented numbers to vote in the presidential election. 90% of the black vote went to an obscure candidate from the South whose capture of the Democratic nomination astonished all the political experts. Jimmy Carter of Plains, Georgia, received the necessary edge from blacks to win the presidency of the United States. Blacks did make significant political gains during the 70s, but as the decade neared its end, some blacks left politics. Senator Edward Brooke, Republican of Massachusetts, was the first black U.S. senator elected since Reconstruction. His career began in 1967 and included appointments to the Banking, Housing, Urban Affairs, and the Appropriations Committee of the Senate. In 1978, Brooke was defeated in the state he served for over a decade. And on December 10, 1977, Ms. Barbara Jordan announced her resignation from politics. She read, For reasons predicated totally on my internal compass, directed me to divert my energy to something different and to move away from demands which were all-consuming, I shall not seek elective office in 1978. Perhaps one of the biggest moments for blacks during the 70s came with the appointment of Congressman Andrew Young as United States Ambassador to the United Nations. Young was sworn in by Justice Thurgood Marshall, the only black on the Supreme Court. Young's tenure as ambassador was controversial almost from the very beginning. 
In July of 1977, Young was quoted as saying, Presidents Richard Nixon and Gerald Ford were racists. One year later, French newspapers quoted the former ambassador as saying, there were hundreds, perhaps thousands of political prisoners in the United States. There were repeated calls for Young's resignation, but not until August 1979 did Young resign. The reason? A controversial meeting with a member of the Palestine Liberation Organization.